divine instruments for preservation and deliverance. Number one is faith. Romans chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 3. The moment you gave your heart to Christ, God made sure he put faith in your spirit because you will need it. He said to every one of us, he dealt the measure of faith. You will need it because in this journey, there will be many attacks. But you see, many people don't know that faith is a defense system. So they take their faith for granted. They don't doctor their faith. They don't nurture their faith. And so when the devil comes, because there is no barricade of faith, he attacks and plunders them as though they were not born again. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16, he said, Therefore, or above all, he said, Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to defend or to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You must understand what Christ has done for you. Because that's where your faith originates from. If you don't understand what Christ has done for you, you will not know the basis for declaring that you'll be safe. You will not know the basis for declaring that no evil can come to you. Because when you are saying it, you may be saying it because you are related to a pastor. You may be saying it because you attend a church where there is power. And when things go wrong, you now start questioning the veracity or the credibility of the power. The power is real. The problem is that you didn't build your own faith. Because there is an extent to which a pastor can help you. There is an extent to which a church can help you. But the Bible did not recommend a pastor or a church as the primary source of your defense. He recommended your faith. He said the just shall live by his own faith. Not by the faith of his pastor. Not by the faith of his church. They can raise the dead on a Sunday service. Somebody can die in your house on Monday. I'm telling you. So thank God for what God is doing in church. Connect to what God is doing in church. But by all means, build your own faith. Habakkuk 2 verse 4. Romans 1 17. Galatians 13 8. The just shall live. Galatians 6 11 and Hebrews 13 8. The just shall live by his faith. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5 7 it said, We walk by faith, not by sensory perception. What is the nature? What is the quality of your faith now? If there's a challenge, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? If there is an issue, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? That is who you are. And if your faith does not come alive to a point where anything that happens to you, you respond by faith. You are in trouble. As I am now, if you tell me, oh, something has happened, there is a scripture that will jump out. I'm saturated. And that scripture, that response of faith is your defense. Your life can be invincible if you know what to do with your faith. You are not a victim. Don't let the devil manipulate you to think you are a victim. Eat the word. Chew the word. And see how things can begin to shift just by speaking. The first weapon or instrument of divine preservation is faith. Number two, second instrument for dominion or for invincible living or for a sustained life of deliverance is prayer. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 quoted here several times. Ask of me, I will answer. That's the first part of that scripture. That means anything that you are going through, anything that you are yet to go through, by prayer, you can change it. It's a blank check. That's God giving you a blank check. So every Christian has a blank check. Ask of me, I will answer. He didn't tell you what to ask. Anything you desire. Another scripture puts it that way. It says when you ask, you will have it. In fact, the Bible speaking, in Matthew 7, 7, it says ask, you receive. Seek, you find. Knock, the door shall be opened. It says whoever. So this is not a prerogative of apostles. This is not a prerogative of prophets. This is not a prerogative of certain Christians. He said, whoever asketh, receive it. Whoever seeketh, find it. And whomever, whoever knocketh, he said to him, the door 
shall be open. And he went further to say, as wicked as your earthly parents are. You know the meaning of that scripture? is a comparative scripture. He's not necessarily saying your mother is wicked. He's not necessarily saying your father is wicked. He's telling you that the love of your parents compared to the love of God for you is wickedness. As wicked as your parents are. He said, will you ask them for bread? They give you stone. Will you ask them for fish? They give you serpent. He said, your heavenly father is willing to give you the kingdom. So the problem with Christians is that they are not asking. They are not praying. They are not declaring. He said, declare thou and it shall be done. So it is what you say that you have. This is why prayer becomes vital. Ask of me. He said, I will answer. Somebody has headache. He tells 10 people, headache. I have headache. I have headache. Sometimes this is my headache. And he has not prayed about it. Somebody has a loan. He has not paid. He has asked 200 people. He has not prayed about it. Somebody has a growth. He has not prayed. He has told 10 people about it. But for those who have understanding, the moment there's an affliction, before any living creature is aware, you talk to God. The second instrument for your preservation is prayer. As much as you can, and as much as it's within your power, pray. It will change your life. Number three, third instrument of preservation is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you this, and these things I'm showing you are things that are available to every Christian. So that you cannot say, oh, it's because I'm not a prophet. There are certain benefits that is accrued to apostles, prophets, and to different offices. But what is available to the believer is enough for him. That's why I'm showing you this. Every one of us seated here is anointed. And the anointing of God on your life is enough to preserve you. Acts 10, 38. See what the Bible said. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that were what? Oppressed of the devil. What was Jesus anointed with? The Holy Ghost and what? Power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Look at what the Bible said. Not many days from now. You shall be anointed with what? The Holy Ghost and power. So the same ingredient that was on Jesus' life that made him shut down the oppression of the devil is the same ingredient that is on your life. You are anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. What is the beauty of the anointing? Isaiah 10, 27. He said, the yoke shall be broken. The body shall be lifted off your shoulders. Why? because of the anointing see there are many things that cannot happen to you because you are anointed the problem is that many believers are not conscious of the anointing and they are not submitted to the move of the anointing listen the anointing on your life will teach you in first john 2 20 and 27 he said you have an unction from the holy ghost and he said that unction teaches you all things there are many times that the anointing moves you to do something the anointing moves you to go somewhere. Therein lies your security. Therein lies your blessing. But because many are not aware that they are anointed, neither are they sensitive of that anointing, the anointing is not allowed to find expression. Most of the great things that will happen to you in your life will be because of that anointing. And your preservation is one of them. The fourth weapon of preservation is wisdom. Wisdom and discernment. Wisdom is the divine ability to apply knowledge. And discernment is sound judgment. If you will be preserved, you cannot be deficient in this too. Do you know why many people, although they pray, although they are anointed, they are destroyed? They are foolish. They don't take advantage of the wisdom of God in their lives. Isaiah 30 verse 21. See what the Bible said. It said, And thy eyes, thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right or to the left. So it brings precision to your life. You can't err. That's the work of discernment. And when the Holy Ghost came into your life, He brought sound judgment into your life. This is different from discerning of spirit. The standing of spirit is the ability to recognize the presence of spirits 
whether the spirit of God, of demons, or of the spirit of men. This one is sound judgment. A believer has a faculty within him that makes him or causes him to make the right decision and not to err. When men err, it's because they have departed from wisdom and discernment. Proverbs 11 verse 14 is now showing you how wisdom is activated. In the multitude of counsel, that's how men come into wisdom. The counsels of scripture, the counsels of those that God has given access to wisdom, the counsel of the brethren. If you want to walk perpetually in wisdom, he said you must tarry where counsel dwells. And he said, dear, there is safety. Number five, instrument of preservation, principles, principles. Don't live your life spontaneously. You will die. You will fail. There are some people, first three months of the year, they are going left. Set. The next three months, they turn right. And when you ask them, they say, they, they are picking some signals. After 10 years, you know what has happened? They have moved like this and moved like this. Moved like this for 10 years. So in 10 years, they have canceled everything they have done. They've gone nowhere. God is not haphazard. There are patterns. There are principles. There are ordinances. First Timothy 3.15 If I tarry, he said, know how you should behave yourself in the house of God. Which is the ground and pillar of truth. There is a how. Remove not the ancient landmarks. There is a pattern. I can tell you the reason many young people fail is because they don't regard the patterns. They don't regard the principles. Their life is so spontaneous that they literally vaporize out of existence. The fifth, sixth instrument of divine preservation are the gifts of God on your life. If you want to be safe and if you want to be prosperous in life, better pay attention to your gift. Every day, sharpen it. A day will come when everything will depend on how sharp your gift is. The Bible said the Gentiles will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. And there's a level you get to in your life. You will need the influence of the king to be safe. But if your gift is not there, the king will never come. That's why you need to sharpen it. There are three levels of giftings. Number one, there are resources. Money, property that you have. Develop them. Make sure they are on the increase. Let your money not finish. Let your money not finish. Some of the things you enjoy, some of the security you have is because of your money. So whatever righteous you are doing, smart and productive, that is producing that money, keep at it. Number two, your talent. Those are natural giftings. You can talk, people laugh. You can coordinate an event. You have intelligence for leadership. Everywhere you come, you bring direction. Don't let that thing leave you. You are a comedian. You speak. People laughed. You can play football. You can weave hair. You can do something. Master it. Improve on it. A day will come, it will speak for you. And there is the spiritual giftings. You have word of knowledge. You have word of wisdom. You have gift of healing. You have gift of miracle. See, master that gift. Finally, what is the instrument of divine preservation? Is the mercy of God. All of these six things I've spoken about. There is a place you may get to and none of them may walk. That is why in addition to it all, you need the mercy of God. There is a place where mercy comes in. Because God knows that sometimes you may not walk in faith. Sometimes you may not walk in wisdom. Sometimes you may not walk in discernment. So what God uses as an umbrella to shield you is his mercies. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 and 23. He said it is for the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. He said his compassion faileth not. James 2.13 he said 
mercy prevails over judgment. Listen to me. It's good to build faith. It's good to have wisdom. It's good to pray. It's very good to sharpen your gift. But over and above it all, you must hold on to the mercy of God. Every other thing may fail you, but mercy will remain forever.